day everyone today i will show you the history equipment rules and regulations officiating and game of volleyball but before that let me first tell you a brief introduction about who william george morgan is first in 1895 he invented volleyball second he was a physical director of Young Men's Christian Association in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Third, he graduated to the Springfield College of YMCA. Fourth, in January 23, 1870, he was born in Lockport, New York, USA. And in December 27, 1942, he died. Moving forward, volleyball was originally called Mintonet. In 1895, up to present, volleyball still exists. In 1900, a special ball was designed for the sport. In the Philippines, an offensive style of passing the ball in a high trajectory to be struck by another player were introduced in 1916, and in 1917, the game was changed from 21 to 15 points. Three hits per side and back row attack rules were instituted in 1920. And in 1922, the first YMCA National Championship were held in Brooklyn, New York. 27 teams from 11 states were represented. It became clear that tournaments and rules were needed, so the United States Volleyball Association was formed. The first U.S. Open was staged as the field was open to non-YMCA squads in 1928 and in 1930 the first two-man beach game was played. National volleyball referees were approved and recognized in 1934 and in 1937 the AAU convention in Boston Action was taken to recognize the U.S. Volleyball Association as the official national governing body in the U.S. The Federation International de Volleyball was founded in 1947 and the first two-man beach tournament was held in 1948. On the other hand, in 1949, the initial world championship were held in Prague, Czechoslovakia. In 1964, volleyball was introduced to the Olympic Games in Tokyo and the California Beach Volleyball Association was formed in 1965. In 1974, the World Championship in Mexico were telecast in Japan and the U.S. national women's team began a year-round training regime in Pasadena, Texas in 1975 moved to Colorado Springs in 1979, Coto de Casa and Fountain Valley, California in 1980, and San Diego, California in 1985. While in 1977, the U.S. national men's team began a year-round training regime in Dayton, Ohio, moved to San Diego, California in 1981, and in 1983, the Association of Volleyball Professionals were formed. In addition, in 1984, the U.S. won their first medals at the Olympics in Los Angeles, where men won the gold and the women won the silver. The Women's Professional Volleyball Association was formed in 1986, and in 1988, the U.S. men repeated the gold in the Olympics in Korea. The World League was created in 1990 and the sport of volleyball was 100 years old in 1995. The two-person beach of volleyball became an Olympic sport in 1996. The basic equipment you will require for indoor volleyball are court shoe, knee pads, ankle braces, proper uniform, socks, ball, and net. While in outdoor volleyball, there is no special equipment required, but you will need to plan for sun protection and hydration. Moreover, the first volleyball net, borrowed from tennis, 
was only 6 by 6 high. Though, you need to remember that the average American was shorter in the 19th century. Here are the rules and regulations in playing volleyball. There should be 6 players on a team, 3 on the front row, and 3 on the back row. There are maximum of 3 hits per side. Player may not hit the ball twice in a succession. A block is not considered a hit. Ball may be played off the net during a volley and on a serve. A ball hitting a boundary line is in and a ball is out. If it hits an antenna, the floor completely outside the court, any of the net or cables outside the antenna, the referee stand or pole, the ceiling above, a non-playable area. It is legal to contact the ball with any part of a player's body and it is illegal to catch, hold, or throw the ball. In addition, if two or more players contact the ball at the same time, it is considered one play and either player involved may make the next contact. A player cannot block or attack a serve from on or inside the 10-foot line. After the serve, frontline players may switch positions at the net. A higher competition, the officiating crew may be made up of two referees, line judges, scorer, and an assistant scorer. The result of a violation is a point for the opponent, like when serving, stepping on or across the service line as you make contact with the serve, failure to serve the ball over the net successfully, contacting the ball illegally like lifting, carrying, throwing, and other things like that, touching the net with any part of the body while the ball is in play. Exception is if the ball is driven into the net with such a force that it causes the net to contact an opposing player, no foul will be called and the ball shall continue to be in play. When blocking a ball coming from the opponent's court, contacting the ball when reaching over the net is violation if both your opponent hasn't used three contacts and they have a player there to make a play on the ball. It is also considered a violation when you attack a ball coming from the opponent's court, contacting the ball when reaching over the net, and if the ball hasn't yet broken the vertical plane of the net. Next is crossing the court center line with any part of your body. The only exception is if it is the hand or foot or the entire hand or the entire foot, must cross for it to be a violation. Next is serving out of order and back row player blocking. It is when at the moment of contact the back row player is near the net and has part of his or her body above the top of the net. Lastly is back row player attacking where a ball inside the front zone is inside the 10-foot line and when at the moment of contact the ball is completely above the net or what they called an illegal attack. In officiating, the first referee has the authority over all the other members of the officiating crew. The first referee should talk to all the officiating crew members before the match starts. Going over any questions, officials might have about their responsibilities. The first referee should have a talk with the second referee before the match starts, discussing issues such as pre-match protocol and anything that will help the match run more smoothly. On the other hand, the second referee should establish a rapport with the scorekeeper and libero tracker. If the scorer and libero tracker have a problem, or don't understand something, they should be comfortable enough to ask the second referee for help. The scorekeeper as volleyball official 
has a main job and that is to make sure that the score is correct at all times. The scorekeeper uses a score sheet to keep a track of the game and if there is a difference between the score on the score sheet and the visual score, the visual score should be changed to match the score on the score sheet unless the mistake on the score sheet can be determined and corrected. One of the referees should check the accuracy of the score sheet at the end of each set. Before the match starts, the scorekeeper should fill in the pre-match information such team names and starting lineups. While during the match, they record points when they are scored, watches the servers and indicates immediately to the referees when a server has served out of order. It is also good preventive officiating to watch team's rotation in case assistance is needed for the second referee to determine the correct team alignment. They also record player substitutions and team timeouts. They record any sanctions and all other events as instructed by the referees. And also, they record the final result of the set. In case of a protest, after the first referee gives authorization, the scorekeeper let the game captain write a statement of protest on the score sheet. And after the match, they record the final result of the match and sign the score sheet. Assistant scorer as a valuable official sits at the scorer's table next to the scorekeeper. Its main function is to record libero replacements onto a libero tracking sheet. The assistant scorer notifies any fault with libero replacements, operates the manual scoreboard on the scorer's table, and checks the score on the scoreboard with the score on the score sheet. There are line judges in officiating volleyball. If only two line judges are used, they stand at the corner of the end line that is closest to the right hand of each referee, diagonally from the corner. The line judges watch the end line and side line of their respective corners. While for FIVB and official competitions, four line judges are used. Each line judge stands in the free zone 1 to 3 meter lined up with the imaginary extension of their respective line. Line judge main responsibility is to make signals to help out the referees in making judgment calls. Line judges may be instructed to use flags to make the signals. As you can see in the illustration, these are the line judge signals using flag. In letter A, there is ball in. In letter B, ball out. In letter C, ball out after contact with a player. In letter D, ball outside the antenna, service line fault, and obtain referee's attention. While in letter E, impossible to judge. When volleyball was first invented, it was much different from the game today. You could have as many players as you wanted on each team. There were 9 innings per team. There were 9 innings per game with 3 outs per inning. There was also no limit on the number of hits of the ball on each side of the court. When the serving team wins a volley, it wins a point and the right to continue serving. The ball must clear the net on a serve, and a game is played to 21 points or some other agreed upon number. The team that wins the best two out of the three games wins the match. Ace is when the ball is served to other team and no one touches it. Side out is when the team that served the ball makes a mistake causing the ball to go to the other team. Roof is when a player jumps above the height of the net and blocks the ball. Dig is when a player makes a save from a very difficult spike. Kill is when a team spikes the ball and it ends in either a point or a side out.